Welcome, data people. We are Zuma. My name is Matt, and this is Data for Good. This this podcast is brought to you by Zuma. Zuma is a dedicated recruitment company for senior data insights and analytics professionals, connecting you with Berlin's most influential companies. The Data for Good podcast is for the world of data analytics and engineering, giving you access to the thoughts and opinions of Berlin's most successful data people. Today, we are joined by Roman Thibault. Associate Director of Data Engineering at HelloFresh. Now, we've had this one lined up for quite a while. I've been looking forward to it as we're going to talk about what it means to be a data engineer. Roman, welcome. How are you? Thanks. I'm all right. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, uh, indeed. Are you uh, a fan of the darker nights, the, the colder winters? Are you more of a summer man? Say that again. Are you a fan of the darker nights? Well... I've been in Berlin for over 10 years, so you get used to it, right? You you learn to live with it. I don't mind living at night, indeed. No. And you've uh, been in the US recently? How I was, was traveling, trip? as you know, uh, trick-or-treating with my three-year-old daughter. Quite a lot of fun. I was uh, chastised today when I came back to the office for bringing too much candy back. Uh, I guess I'll eat everything next time. Yeah, a tip for yourself for next time, definitely. Um, to start off the podcast, uh, I'm going to make you think back a little bit. What was or what is your first memory of data? That's a very good question. It sets me right back into my epistemological academic background. I think my relation to data comes from language where you realize that from a cognitive perspective, from a technical perspective, from a logical perspective, language is information, information is data. Data being the most modern iteration of information in its yeah. most powerful structured uh, format. As a child, I was already fascinated by memory in the sense that I, I, I was challenged from a, a medical perspective to assert mm -hmm. my you know, oral, visual, scriptural memory. And I kind of covered all these grounds. So I had a, a lot of issues uh, growing up trying to forget things, actually. And okay. over time, I've now realized uh, in my later years that you do forget more easily as you get older. So it's all good. Yeah, def <laughs> definitely. Hopefully not too much uh, in regards to the work that you do. But it's interesting to hear the root of uh, your passion and data engineering is is a great passion of yours. So yeah, let's talk data and in particular data engineering um, for our listeners. Um, what is a data engineer and yeah, why do they exist? It's a question that comes back quite often, right, in our industry. Why do we need data engineers? Can't we be all engineers or software engineers? I think there's something for them to be connecting the dots there. Mm -hmm. An engineer is someone who likes to solve problems, right? I would refer to the to the 60s, 70s, early 70s mindset, of, like the hacker mindset, as, as mm -hmm. they used to call it, of just trying to get your hands dirty, look at a problem, look at language again, as, as programming goes, as coding goes, right? And really try to solve something from a technical perspective, make a software run, make a bunch of code compile, and take whatever it takes to go from A to B, right? Mm -hmm. Where it differs over time and space is the fact that in our industry, we've had software engineers historically, right? Yep. What we call today software engineers, look at structures, applications, system software, utility software would be the big three categories, right? Mm -hmm. A data engineer comes in contrast to that in the fact that they have to look at what flows through the systems, right? Where a software engineer looks at the structure, an engineer is going to look at the process first. It doesn't mean that the software engineer doesn't have to concern themselves with data. It doesn't mean that the data engineer is free to ignore software engineering principles. But you see that distinction in, for example, in programming languages, right? With the, the comeback of, of Scala, of programming languages at large, where the data engineer looks at efficiency, at the function, at forgetting what the hardware has to do throughout the path to look at the result. Whereas object-oriented coding is much more focused again on the static point as a starter and what you can build upon it on top of it and around it, right? Mm. And that's where you see the biggest difference. From a, a business perspective, obviously, data is a hot topic. Data is oftentimes considered as a jewel of any given company, right? It's mm -hmm. a huge part of our, of our valuation over time. And this is where data engineering now is seen as 
coming with a big of a, a territory, right? And part of our, our, our goal here is to really not put data engineers in an ivory tower, but really to establish those bridges back into applications, into software engineering at large, into our business, and making the whole of HelloFresh truly data driven, right? Not for mm -hmm. the sake of it, but because it brings meaning to our work, it brings meaning to our company as a whole. So it sounds to get the most value out of data engineers is to truly embed them in the business as opposed to having them as a separate function. So that's the beauty of <clears throat> my joining HelloFresh beyond what I could have expected or, or perceived from the interview process, right? There's a strong and true ambition around data and being data-driven at HelloFresh mm -hmm. at large, not just for data specialists, but for all uh, employees. And when you look at data engineers, it's well reflected in the fact that we have data engineers embedded into our, our central data function, the Global Data Alliance. Mm -hmm. We also have data engineers throughout our business domain, right? People who are going to be focused, as you said, towards our, our, our business, towards our product, in payments, in how we, we treat our boxes, our customers, and so on. Mm -hmm. right? You also have data engineers in local markets directly embedded into business units in different countries to really support our growth effort, our customer satisfaction effort, right? So data engineers come with that mindset. They have very different types of skills, hands-on. We are, of course, trying to reify that and, and rationalize yeah. that. But we appreciate that diversity, diversity of skill, diversity of culture. Uh, you, you can see that in our industry standard when people talk about staff archetypes, for example. I mm -hmm. think that is propagated at different levels of seniority where you see people who are really good at getting their hands into the code, getting dirty, yeah. and fixing stuff. You will see... Staff engineers were much more reflexive and looking at the big picture, how to support their peers, giving feedback to managers at different level in how they would like to work, right? And mm -hmm. to the one who's looking intensively at, at code, you try to bring them out of that at times and say, you also need to share the love. You also need to share your knowledge with others. They need to hear your voice, right? And mm -hmm. the one who's looking more at, at the side of you know, processes or project management, the question will be, hey, how do you maintain your skill level? Do you want to transition towards a product management role, towards an analytical role, towards a leadership role, right? And at our scale, that's the beauty of it for me and what makes my job pretty easy and fun. We have those options, right? We're still recruiting at scale, not for the sake of it, not throwing people at the problem, but really trying to understand what is it we're trying to achieve from a data perspective, from a business mm -hmm. perspective, from a yeah. customer perspective, and so on, as you said. I think the beauty of data, there seems to be a lot of, different folks coming from different backgrounds that are not necessarily the traditional data roots and um, maybe that we've seen from other areas like software development following specific journeys into an area so as a data engineer what does it mean to be a data engineer i think i i'd, I'd go back to something that is not the most common talking point in our industry which is really the epistemology of data the fact that data is ever flowing, mm -hmm. just like water, don't quote Bruce Lee on that, but that's the idea. That's what I see, right? It has business ramifications, right? Data loss is our biggest fear as data engineers. Yeah. But also has ramifications in how you approach your work over time and scale. Not to diminish anyone's contribution, but the ideal uh, agile approach to software engineering is the capacity to zoom in on a feature on a 15-day cycle would be our yeah. industry standard, right? and get that done. Open the code, edit the code, make it more elegant, uh, amplify it, close the box, run it, and iterate, right? A yep. data engineer will have a hard time doing that. Even in the best case scenario, even when building very simple pipelines, you always have to think and look back at the source of the data and the output you're looking for, be it a product, big analytical yeah. channel, right? And, and this is what forces you to do things at scale, especially in our big data era, let's call it like that, where then suddenly the ramifications of the, the producer of the data, the consumer of the data at each end mean millions of euros worth of storage, worth of processing power, right? Mm -hmm. Millions of euros worth of risk to manage from a GDPR perspective, for example, yeah. and millions of euros of potential revenue uh, of growth towards a, a better customer experience towards what HelloFresh is trying to achieve in the background in yeah. terms of sustainability, in terms of changing the way people consume food, right? This is our, our, our mantra here. 
Um, this is what data engineers have to have in mind, have to be able to forget, have to be able to go back to, to find meaning in this hacker mindset of, I'm doing the right thing for myself, for my team, for my company, for the user, for the customer. Uh, that feedback loop sounds and looks very much like any agile methodology we're seeking to emulate throughout our Hello Tech uh, organization. Mm -hmm. But it's, it makes my job easier in the sense that you can't avoid that as a data engineer. You cannot be successful leading data engineers, supporting data engineers, if you at any point in time forget that essential, again, epistemology of what data does to your brain, does to your stack, does to your job on a daily basis. You can get lost into it. It's scary at times, but that daunting opportunity to make choices, to find your autonomy, is what I think makes our, our, our data org and our employees pretty strong. Yeah, nice. If you were to summarize and give a one golden rule for a data mindset, I mean, there's thousands of tools and there's different roles, but what would you say the, the number one rule for a data mindset? Not to open Pandora's box, but there's something very true to that, specifically when you're a data specialist, <clears throat> being data driven. If in your job as a recruiter, I ask you to be data driven, you might be able to give me numbers. This is how many people we interviewed over the past month. This is how many leads we got, right? When you're the data engineer, when you're the data scientist and so on, you have to be data driven about being data driven, right? And back then that meant, okay, I'm building a pipeline for my small scale company. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure that I have quality checks in place. The next iteration was the company is being successful, right? So suddenly we have to support more data processes, more data needs. That's the idea of the platform, right? So the platform is already data specialists who build tooling, who build services for others to be data driven in a more agile, speedy way, right? Mm -hmm. And now, as you mentioned it, the data mesh approach is the overly elegant on paper overly elegant way of approaching that complexity from the central perspective, from the platform perspective, and from yeah. the perspective of empowering different business units to use and leverage data as they see fit. So we're mm -hmm. in a world where we don't say, I am the data specialist, so I will teach my ways to you. I will tell you how to use data, but I will create again this feedback loop of saying, I can tell you what can happen from a infrastructure perspective, from a cost perspective, from a security perspective, and you mm -hmm. can tell me what you can do, what you want to do with data at scale, at cost, with minimal risk, right? That may be a long answer, but being data-driven is, is not just a motto that companies are adopting. Mm -hmm. There's the realization that it is the most impactful approach to getting work done. Mm -hmm. It is also, if well done, a very meaningful way for employees to find their own way find their own way of learning and growing without getting lost in Excel sheets or endless reports, right? Yeah. The word that jumps out to me, I think, is selfless. Would you agree that data engineering is, is very selfless in the work that you're doing? In, in what I just said, yes, because we're looking at a community that is bound to support internal users first and foremost. We do have data engineers working directly on user on, on customer facing products, obviously. But first and foremost, we often live in the shadows, right? We're not vampires quite yet, but we vampirize data if we have to. Yeah. And and that <laughs> I think as most engineers go, right? It implies a, a sense of selflessness. It implies a sense of who am I doing this for besides myself? Accepting yeah. your own ego and then projecting yourself again in these very reflexive motions mentally, intellectually, and emotionally to say, I'm not doing this just for me. If you want to do it just for yourself, build your startup, find another job, HelloFresh will probably not be the best place to be. It's mm -hmm. not about being a team player for the sake of it, but it's really to say you can only be successful with others for others, right? Then you have all different degrees of internal users in platform teams that can be quite straining for, for, for people who do a customer service job on top of being highly skilled engineers. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the intrinsic reward comes from building and completing the challenges. And that's, that's the fundamental we were discussing first, right? This hacker yeah. mindset of, of saying, I'm fixing this, this is working. There was a and B and I connected the dots. And next week I will have another idea on how to do it 
more elegantly, more efficiently with a trick of the mind. And you see that happen quite often in, uh, you know, for example, Hacker Weeks, right? Where really you force yourself for the fun of it to go to the most direct solution. Yeah. And it might be ugly, it might be clumsy, but oftentimes this is how you get to the wild zone, right? Uh, building on that, I mean, we, we can also face those realities quite clearly. I will project myself as a leader, just speaking for myself. Yeah. Data engineers are extremely sought after currently, right? There are more data engineers, uh, data engineering positions open than data engineers in the world by a margin. It means that the reward is also financial. I do mm -hmm. not know too many people who are able to do a data engineer's job just for the money, right? You need to find some solace in what you're building, what you're coding, who you're working with. Otherwise, well, you need to talk to me because I haven't met you yet. <laughs> so how do we, someone who, who wants to maybe get into data engineering in that case, there's not enough data engineers in the world. So we're looking at people to maybe come from a software engineering background or a technical background and they're looking to get into data engineering. How do we show them the value of data and the benefits it, it can achieve. So just to amend your question, I'll take the example of HelloFresh because that's been a strong focus throughout the year, right? Overall, we're hiring at scale, right? Yeah. We tend to hire more on the senior end of things because a lot of things are happening and I, I'm not one to create tension for more junior team members who would be thrown into the midst of it. Mm -hmm. That being said, we have multiple programs working with different NGOs, academic institutions, uh, women in tech institutions, making yeah. sure that we bring in on the engineering side, on the data side, people with zero experience from a technical perspective, from a business perspective. One, well, from a company perspective, it's actually a more direct way to talent, to diversity, to more voices joining the concert of voices at HelloFresh. And two, because it's also extremely rewarding for people of different skill levels, of different seniority levels, to be able to mentor, right? Um, I often talk about the, the duties and the rights of engineers at different levels of seniority. Mm -hmm. I need a, a junior data engineer to feel like they can contribute to that concert of voice by mentoring, by teaching a working student, yeah. right? a remunerated working student, not someone we're exploiting, but someone that we can bring up and maybe six months down the line, that working student realizes, I really don't want to be a data engineer. I want to be a product manager and say, but you're welcome to say that. And it's our duty to accompany you on that, right? Mm -hmm. My answer might be off center compared to your question, but, but that's really what we're looking at. You, you, for a company like HelloFresh, I can't speak for all companies. It is important that people come as they are. What we check the most in our interview process is not so much which technical boxes are you ticking? Which programming languages do you master? We do that, obviously. But mm -hmm. we're also, first and foremost, looking at your values, right? Who do you aspire to be? I'd rather you tell me you have a true interest in data and being unsure if it's towards engineering or analytics or science than pretend that you're going to get the job just because you think that's what I'm waiting, right? waiting for. Yeah. Uh, it's tricky. It takes time and space for a company like HelloFresh to establish those programs yeah. and those moments where we need different employees to collaborate and come together to mentor. Next summer, we're hoping to create kind of summer programs where we bring students from, from different regions of the world, yeah. uh, looking at how they can contribute in what kind yeah. of teams. And if the result is, well, this was just disruptive for everyone, so be it. Let's learn from that and learn to be more encompassing, more welcoming, right? Uh, yeah. it, it teaches us a lot about our ways of working. It also teaches individual contributors a lot about how much time they take to learn, to teach, mm. to learn together, yeah. right? If we don't do that, most of what I've told you today becomes meaningless quickly. It, it sounds, and we're seeing more and more data by its nature is becoming more and more accessible to more and more people have you seen similar that's an interesting question i think for the past 10 years in this industry i've waited for the next five years or three years to see the answer to that question from a 
I'll, I'll give you a dichotomy that I don't think too many people contemplate despite working closely together. And I'm simplifying grossly for the sake of time. If you look at the data analytics sphere, yeah. most of the, the big picture lies into insight, insight, foresight, right? I could go to pretty much any leader, any individual contributor on the analytics side of things, say that and sound like I know what I'm talking about. Probably not true, but I can pretend it is. Yeah. If you look at data engineering, I think there is one new successful paradigm every six months at minimum, and I'm being quite, you know, conservative there. Yeah. Uh, be it the data mesh, the lake house, all concepts that bring a lot to the table that force us to think about how we work, but that, that also correspond to different technical solution, different vendors, right? We have the chance at HelloFresh to work with a plethora of vendors and really like in, in productive ways, we embrace that. We also embrace that our engineers are allowed to do that. But at the same time, your question lies into the, how simple is simple, right? How do, how do you get access to data? And there, there's no like overarching answer. That's why we have a job. And, and, and that's why the platform side of things, the mesh side of things matter, because the answer to how simple is it to access data lies into what you need from that data, right? Hmm. Oftentimes you see, for example, data engineers becoming extremely knowledgeable on the business logic behind the pipelines they build. I've had discussions in other companies in other times where I had to question the motive of leaders, of business leaders, of salespeople to say, you're putting the data engineer in the shoe of building the infrastructure, building the processes and the understanding to bring data to you. And now you're expecting them to have the best knowledge on what KPIs are going to determine the next five years for this company, right? Fine by me, they'll be asking for more money, but be careful to that. Rather, let's look back at how do we bring understanding to non-data specialists, to any employee, to have the time and space, to have the chance to look at data, to understand what they can learn from it, can mm. bring to others from it, right? Uh, be it in HR, for example, which is often a, a forgotten zone, be on, on legal topics, on financial topics, and so on and so forth. Um, data can be simple. Data can be more complex. It's when you say become more complex, it's going one way more tools, more. So that's what I just mentioned. There's a technical side of things where yeah. we have to, to find the balance between each use case and scalability you know, rationalizing our stack. Again, HelloFresh is a pretty amazing landscape in that regard, passing you the details for today. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on, the, on the product side of things, on the business side of things, on the real life side of things, there's a difference between collecting all data, which is what big data saw as rewarding, as impactful from a business perspective, mm -hmm. versus understanding what data is going to be relevant short to long term for us. What data are we legally allowed to collect and leverage? What data are we ethically interested in storing and leveraging? Right? Yeah. And these are the big questions if you look at what Gartner is saying for the next few years, right? AI explainability, data ethics, right? I think at HelloFresh, I have the chance I, I, as a leader and as an individual, right? From what yeah. this how it speaks to me, I have the chance that HelloFresh really has these themes embedded into the way we talk about data, we think about data. We're not perfect, but we really care about what meaning we're going to find in data and how we're going to get to it, right? It, it can come at a cost. We are a business, but mm -hmm. it will never be at the cost of what the customer needs, what the law says, and so on. As a leader, I think it's a topic that would be good to, to go into a bit more detail. Um, so you're a chapter lead in data. So for those who, who don't know, talk to us about what is a chapter lead in data? What, what, what is your role? So going back to the, what some would call the Spotify model, right? There's the idea that from a team topology perspective, teams are very decentralized. Teams are very cross-functional, right? We let people bring the right skills to their mandate, to their local mandate, and we let them be. To ensure a certain level of quality in 
work globally, mm -hmm. best practices, a Spotify model encourages the creation of chapters. So for example, you see that at HelloFresh, I can think of the core experiment experimentation team who has a couple of data engineers working hand in hand with backend engineers, DevOps and so on, right? Another team on the other side will be fully integrated data engineers. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that this cross-functional team here or this purist team there bring about the same practices, the same approach to data engineering, right? This is where, sorry, the data engineering chapter comes in, creating a forum, a very public and a very, you know, equal forum for all data engineers, all people inclined towards data engineering to come mm -hmm. together, to talk about data engineering, to practice data engineering together, to try things new and old uh, regarding data engineering. And also what we do a lot here, look at our hiring processes, look at our development processes, look at mentorship from different mm -hmm. perspectives at different events and so on, right? Um, the difference of how we do it now is the fact that until now, I was very much uh, static in that role. And that was due to the daunting level of complexity at HelloFresh, given how fast the company has grown. Yeah. And now we're looking for this end of year until next year to to embrace the, the true Spotify spirit of having this position being a rotate rotation position where anyone can join, where different programs can be managed by different chapter members, be it a, a junior data engineer helping on writing down some documentation on a more senior team member being in charge of our hiring program as a whole because things are more on the rolling side of things now mm -hmm. and so on. That's what a chapter does. As a chapter lead, I end up spending quite a lot of time mentoring. I've been always very careful about that term since I joined because it was a big expectation from our leadership. I tell every data engineer and every data engineering manager, I am not meant to be a mentor by default. My role as a leader is to nurture the relation between team member and manager first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So taking into consideration the fact that we all come with our own experiences. Most people join HelloFresh already having defined one, two or more mentors in their life and in their career, right? Yeah. Rather than a mentor, I see myself as a concierge in the very hotel sense of the word. I'm the guarantee, I'm the baseline guarantee that if a data engineer has a concern, it will be heard. It doesn't matter if they need uh, more chocolate in the office or if they have a fundamental problem with how they've been evaluated. Yeah. If all other, you know, communication processes are, are close to them or they don't see an answer they like, they can come to me and they can be sure that I'll do something about it. Mm. It sounds maybe pedantic, maybe excessive, but that's a guarantee we want to offer from a, a humane perspective and from a logic perspective, right? As a business, it, it costs us very little to have this, this baseline, this guarantee that our data engineers or the specialists in other fields will be heard whatever happens because they are the most valuable you know, part of our company. Mm. I think off the back of that, it'd be great to, to wrap up with, with a final question. Relationship, communication, it sounds like that's what's most important. Does this align with strategy and vision? How close are they? That's a concern you and I had to the chance to have briefly in the past in the past few months towards how I try to simplify the picture for an, an engineer, an individual contributor in tech, as opposed to how I engage with leaders, right? What's important for me to represent, especially as we spoke about data and this forced epistemological movement, motion, mm -hmm. is the relation between, it, it's not just who we are as people and what we do as technologists, but really that relation you just mentioned between the two. And this is what I tend to call communication. Other companies would call it processes, right? You and I talking today and how we came to the, deci the decision of, of talking today from a corporate perspective, from you and I getting to know each other, how managers run one-on-one -on -one throughout the company, how retrospectives are the most important rituals in our agile teams, and so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. That goes up to the strategy level. That goes up to the relation between what each individual wants to bring to the table and how that's going to coalesce into a team mandate, a tribe strategy, a company perspective on the next 
12 months, 36 months, right? Mm -hmm. Up, down the line. Um, at, at leadership level, I would use different dimensions to reflect on how leaders can support these motions, right? Yeah. It's not so much about purely about engineering leadership. Of course, you want people who understand what they're talking about, who came yeah. from the same roots. I'm a poor example of that at times. But you also want to see engineering leaders who are able to detach themselves from the grind, trusting the teams to do the right thing, because these are the people with the right skills, and rather step back and look at time and space rather than you know people and technology, but really just helping teams, helping tribes, helping individuals finding the right pacing, right? And not saying you're going too fast, you're going too slow, but say, how are you doing today? How do yeah. we create psychological safety? And of course, from a, I'm not inventing anything, this is what any good MBA would tell you, from a leadership perspective that translates into the, the, the same bubbles of people, technology, communication, which would then be called oftentimes uh, emotional leadership, programmatic leadership, and uh, a political at times leadership when when need be right political being the policy the sense yeah. of the agora we create as a community of practitioners it's not a dirty word if you don't make it one and can we use data to facilitate this not alone not in isolation what you're talking about is maybe the the biggest and most beautiful challenge of a company like hellofresh i would placard it onto the role of mid-level managers is the capacity to go from talking to each team member and to the team as a whole and ensuring they're happy to creating a community at a larger scale where we know that we look at well-being and productivity as equals systematically mm -hmm. without invading the intimacy of each team right if i give you a, a very concrete example there i do encourage managers to align on how they format their retrospectives to a certain degree, where yeah. if all your team managers are able to, to find an agreement with their team on saying, okay, the icebreaker for the retro will just be a, how was the last cycle? One to five. It doesn't mean much to them. It's an icebreaker. They're happy to get on with it and talk about what happened truly, right? But at the same time, if each team is able to provide that number, reserving the privacy for the intimacy of, of the retro, right? Yeah. Then over time, your VP, your CTO, any inline manager, we have the capacity to say, well, Matt's team over the past six months was four out of five every cycle. And then suddenly they're one out of five. What happened? You know, um, again, without touching upon the intimacy of what that team yeah. is going to achieve on their own time and their own space. Uh, this would be a way to create data out of very human processes where, where the numbers are never the beginning nor the end of the story, but just a way to go through the story together and, and find a point of alignment. Uh, you see that in performance reviews where people often freak out about the rating they get and to yeah. say, I don't like rating people, but this is the one where I say, if Matt is a three and I'm a three, how do we compare? Where do I learn from him? Do I get to, to talk less and he talks more and so on, right? Uh, I think HelloFresh, from my experience over the past year now almost really embodies that because we we have people in the teams data engineers data analysts product managers hr specialists people throughout the company who really are up to that task of finding meaning in their job of mm -hmm. coming to the table saying well you know what last week was not meaningful and i'm not happy about it it's part of the job what do we do next right yeah um, if that were to change it would be a different world. Uh, so far, so good. We could we could go on for hours. I know that you have a real passion for finding meaning in work and using data to facilitate that. Um, but it is all we have time for today. I think it's already dark where you live, so we should be. Yeah, careful. <laughs> it's. Uh, I think it's topics we lead on very nicely onto future podcasts. We are hopefully doing a live one um, next summer and we would love to, to have you on in the future. Thank you very much, Roman, for your, your time and your rich insights. It's been, uh, it's been educational and you know, we've had a few chats now and they're always, I always come away. 
Anytime. You get me thinking. You get me thinking. I'm sure to the listeners as well. And to the listeners, yeah, drop your questions and feedback into the comment section. We'll uh, pick some out to be answered on future pods. Don't forget to like and share so we can reach as many people. I think lots of people would love to hear uh, Roman's thoughts and some case studies in there from HelloFresh as well. But it's bye from us. Thank you once again, Roman. Thank you. And uh, yeah, ciao for now. Have a good one.